Hey everyone, it's Brian here. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing great. You know, with each passing week that goes by, the world of AI is just increasing exponentially. There are just so many wonderful apps and tools out there, many of them still for free, that you can get your hands on and tap into in order to create some amazing designs for your print-on-demand business so that you can increase the potential of landing more sales, particularly during this fourth quarter. Now, today I thought, you know, for those of you who've been following me, I do tend to use ChatGPT in order to help me with prompts and whatnot. And I thought, hmm, what if I had to use Google Bard in conjunction with Ideogram.ai? And, you know, could I create some really amazing Christmas-related sticker packs in conjunction with Canva so that I can actually start increasing that segment of my print-on-demand business to provide more wonderful Christmas stickers for my customers to see to consider buying and hopefully landing more sales. So the fact that you're here watching this video shows me that you're interested in learning how and about going about it. So with that said, let's head over to my computer and get started. Let's go. Okay, so welcome to my computer screen. And as you can see, I already have Google Bard up and running on my screen. So obviously this video won't be too, too long. And I decided to go with Google Bard today for those of you who have been following my channel. know I tend to use ChatGPT, but today I wanted to give Google Bard a try and basically see what it would come back to me with, with respect to my requests for prompts and whatnot. So basically the first thing that I did was I asked it if it knew what ideogram.ai is, and you know, it came back with a very concise explanation. I'm not gonna read it for you. If you wanna pause the video right now and read it, you can. But from the source down over here, it was quite clear that Google Bard did know what ideogram was, and with that said, I felt confident enough to continue in proceeding with my request. And basically, all I did was I asked it to create an assortment of amazing Christmas stickers for my print-on-demand store. So it already, I wanted it to know that I'm creating this for my online business. The end goal will result in a number of sticker packs that I will be uploading, but first I would like to generate some prompts for each individual Christmas sticker. Here is where I need your help. I wish to eventually create a Christmas sticker pack for the following themes. Retro Christmas, Modern Christmas, Cartoon Christmas, Clip Art Christmas, Scenic View Christmas. Okay, those were the five topics that I wanted to work on. Can you also please provide me with six prompts for each theme mentioned? Make each prompt keyword rich and highly detailed and specific so that Ideogram will be able to give me exactly what I require. Okay, so you do want to go, whether you're using ChatGPT or Google Bard or any of these other platforms out there that are going to be able to help you with your print on demand platform, you want to give it as much information as possible so that obviously it can give you the best possible prompts that you're hoping for. And Google Bard came back to me with some amazing prompts. Okay, so we got six prompts for each theme mentioned, retro Christmas, modern Christmas, and as you can see, we've got six different prompts. I'm gonna copy these prompts and put them in the description box down below so that you can you know, feel free to use them, modify, tweak them for your own personal needs. Um, this is one of the reasons why I so enjoy creating tutorials on my channel to be able to help you guys you know, expedite the process of creating some amazing content for your respective print-on-demand shops so that you can reach a ton of success, particularly in this fourth quarter. So here we are on Ideogram, and I already went ahead and created a few of them, so let me just bring them up over here. So the first one was a retro Christmas sticker of a classic Santa Claus with a big red suit and white beard, carrying a sack full of toys and surrounded by candy canes and snowflakes, white background. Now Google Bar didn't put this part in the prompt. I went ahead and put it in myself, when you are prompting, either on ChatGPT or on Google Bard, if you would like ChatGPT or Google Bard to put any specific text in each of the prompts, then go ahead and type it in your instructions so that obviously it will do it right there from the get-go. And as you can see here, we got four really interesting images. I think out of the four, number one and number four were my favorite. I already went ahead and downloaded them. What I like about it is that obviously we had this nice white clear border around it. This one, there could be a little bit of an issue, particularly if you're creating a sticker pack or a sticker on Redbubble. You know, for those of you who've been using it, know that if you have a lot of little, you know, individual elements that are separate from the main body in the design, Redbubble will print that as an individual sticker. So that might actually look a little bit ugly. It might be a little bit, you know, of a nuisance 
for the client when they are receiving the sticker. So you do want to keep that in your mind when you are selecting which of the images, ideogram or indeed any of the image AI image generating programs that are out there. Um, the other one that I created was a retro Christmas tree with colorful lights and ornaments and a tinsel star. Okay, and I think number four was the best out of all of them. And you know, as I was actually working through this and copying and pasting the prompts from Google Bard and putting them into a diagram, I was also noticing that as it was generating the images, you know, if, you, if you've been using Ideogram for some time now, you will know that down below you'll be able to see other images generated by other users. As you can see, the screen just blanked out because obviously it was updating. And what I tend to do is I like to go through while, you know, my images are being generated and just see what other users are coming up with. And if there's something that I find interesting, I try to see what I could extrapolate from that particular prompt to incorporate it into my own prompts. So in, in essence, I'm using you know the power of Google Bard in addition to the power of Ide Ideogram, and I'm combining the best of both worlds in order to get some really amazing designs for my own respected print-on-demand business. And guys, that's basically all it takes. It isn't brain science. What you need to do is you need to have you know the patience and the fortitude to sit down at your device, whatever device that you're using, and just take a few minutes and research. What are other users keying in? What can I key into Google Bard in order to get back the prompts that I require in order to create some amazing designs, in this case, sticker designs, for you know customers who visit my shop? And in fact, as I was uh, waiting for the images to generate, I came across two really interesting uh, images that popped up. This one was by a user called named Itugis. So I don't know if you ever, will ever watch this episode, but if you did, I really loved what you generated here. And as you can see, it's really, really simple. A girl with a cat sticker, cartoon art, highly detailed 8K illustration. What really caught my attention was that, hmm, I wonder if I had to include highly detailed and 8K at the end of my prompts, in addition to the other selections that Ideogram provides, and what kind of effect would it have on the prompts that I generated through Google Bar? Okay, so that was something I kept in mind too. Let me show you the other one here. This was a real cute one too as well. This was created by a user named Robbie. Um, New Year's theme, I know I'm working on Christmas, but you know, you can always modify and tweak whatever prompt you see, even if it isn't for what it is that you are, you know, shooting to create. Cute gnomes dressed in sweaters, drinking cocoa by a fireplace, surrounded by New Year's Eve celebration, confetti, graffiti, illustration, typography, fashion, 3D render, and vibrant. Those last few ones were probably the buttons um, that this person, you know, clicked on in order to generate the image, to tell Ideogram to generate a specific image. And as you can see here, the image is really great. It's very colorful. I asked to myself, well, instead of New Year's theme, what if it had to be Christmas theme? Instead of gnomes, what if it had to be Christmas characters or characters associated with Christmas? You know, dress in sweaters, drinking cocoa by a fireplace. I could see Santa Claus doing that. You could have Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer or Frosty the Snowman or any of the other, you know, classic Christmas characters that we've all come to know and love. So don't be afraid to borrow certain ideas, to borrow certain themes that, you know, other users use in their own respective prompts and incorporate them into the prompts. And, you know, I went ahead and did that. And basically, this, these are the results that obviously I came back with. So let me just bring you one of a couple of them up here now. Okay, so here was um, a typography illustration of a cute gingerbread man dressed in a Christmas sweater and hat surrounded by Christmas words and phrases, highly detailed 8K. Let me just clear the comment here. As you can see here, we got some really nice designs. I think out of all of them, number four was my favorite. And that's one of the ones that I downloaded for today's tutorial. And then I did another one here pertaining to a clip art Christmas sticker of a snowman with a carrot nose, coal eyes, and a stick mouth wearing a hat and scarf. And again, from the first prompt that I had found on Ideogram, I just typed in highly detailed 8K. And you know, what I kept common amongst all of the images that I generated on the Ideogram was that I always chose poster, 3D render, and cinematic just so that you know i could try to curtail the designs that ideogram was going to be given back to me uh, in a sort of cohesiveness so that obviously um, there would be some degree of similarity in terms of the images being rendered so that you know when i created my sticker pack they wouldn't be markedly different from each other you could if you wanted to again there's no right or wrong answer what you want to do is just be as creative as you can possibly be 
try as many different prompts and there's many different styles and mix and match if you want to. The great thing about Google Bard and Ideogram for the time being, you know, at the time of publishing this video, is that they're both free. So you can generate as many designs as you want, you can create as many sticker packs as you would like and see what you know your customer base is going to fall in love with. You'll know from the sales that you make. And if you make a lot of sales, then you know that you know come the next quarter when we hit January, uh, and you know, you got things like Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day and whatnot, you can actually use these prompts to create sticker packs for those particular holidays because you already know that that is what your customers are buying. Okay, so again, don't be afraid to experiment, don't be afraid to think out of the box and just go ahead and have fun creating some amazing designs. Now, after you've generated all of the images that you want, it's now time to head over to Canva in order to create our sticker pack. So let's do that right now. Okay, so here I am on Canva and what I tend to normally do, it's, I just go to my default Canvas size 4500 by 5400 pixels. Many of you who've been following me know that that is the basic Canvas size for a t-shirt design. Um, I still use it for my sticker packs too as well. I don't really think that it matters. What it ensures me is that I have enough space in order to spread out my stickers so that I won't have any overlapping. You know, for those of you who still use Redbubble, you know, if your stickers are too close together, then what's gonna happen is that Redbubble is gonna print both stickers in close proximity to each other as one sticker, and that means your customer who receives this is gonna have to go through the hassle of cutting it, and that can be a nuisance, and that might put a bad taste in their mouth, and they won't buy again from you in the future. So I wanna make sure that there's enough space between each of the stickers in order to make sure that we don't put our customers through that. So after creating a canvas size of 4,500 pixels by 5,400 pixels, I started uploading the images onto Canva. As you can see here on the left-hand side, these are the images that I generated. Some were retro, some were these 3D renderings. I already went ahead and I placed the first five stickers onto the canvas size. Now, this blue box over here um, represents the template underneath um, that I created, and I'm going to make available to all of you all you need to do is click on the link in the description box down below uh, in order to gain access to it. I will grant access to those who click on it. It may not come instantaneously, but please do be patient with me. I do grant access and I want to make sure that only those who are serious in succeeding in the print on demand industry with their online shops are clicking the resources that I'm offering for free. Um, so that you can obviously reach a great deal of success. Now, what you want to do to make sure that you know your stickers aren't going to be overlapping each other is you can go ahead and create a template like I've done. But if you don't want to waste the time and you know wonder if you're precise or not or if you're off the cuff, you can just download the template that I have available. And then basically all I, all you have to do is just grab your image. Uh, let's see which one did we do yet? Yeah, let's grab this one over here uh, of Rudolph here. Click on it. We'll allow Canva to put the image onto the screen. And then what I'm gonna do is, given the fact that the template is down here at the right-hand corner, I'm just gonna grab it. I'm gonna hover over that box over there and then just grab the top left-hand corner and drag it until, obviously, the blue is covered. And this way, I know that when I download this sticker pack, I'm gonna have six individual stickers that are not gonna to be touching with each other and that when my customers purchase this, they're gonna have six really amazing stickers that they can use for whatever reason they want this holiday season. Now, if you are a Canva Pro user, when you come to download, just by clicking on share above me, okay, and you're gonna click on download, you'll have the option, as you can see here, you tick on the check mark to make sure that the image comes out as a transparent background, rather comes out with a transparent background. If you don't have the Canva Pro subscription, well, there's another workaround um, for this, okay? What's important is that you make sure that before you upload your sticker pack to any print-on-demand um, platform, specifically Redbubble, you wanna make sure that you are saving as a PNG with a transparent background. So let's assume for a moment that I don't have Canva Pro. So I'm gonna turn this off over here, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're going to download it and after it downloads, you want to go to a website called remove.bg forward slash upload. I will leave a link to this website in the description box down below. And then it's simply a matter of grabbing your PNG from whatever folder you have it saved in, and you're going to drag it onto the website. As you can see here, drop the image anywhere. 
And then you're just going to win a few moments for the image to get uploaded onto Remove BG. And once it is done so, as you can see here, the image is going to appear in its original format and then it's going to switch over to Remove Background. And the fact that we've got these checkerbox background gives indication that it is a transparent background. And then all you need to do is just click on download, you save it to a particular folder on your device, on your PC, on your Mac, whatever it is that you're using, and you're good to go in terms of uploading it to whatever print-on-demand platform that you want to. So as you can see, it really doesn't take that long to create a number of really amazing Christmas designs. And again, like I said earlier on in this video, you can use this particular you know, tutorial for any and all events throughout the entire calendar year. But given the fact that we're you know, just starting in the fourth quarter of the time of publishing this video, Christmas is not too far off. You want to make sure that you're getting your Christmas designs up and running on whichever print-on-demand platform that you're selling on so that obviously you can tackle those early bird shoppers, you know, who are looking for Christmas designs, Christmas stickers for loved ones, for themselves, and hopefully you'll be at the top of the listing so that you'll get your designs uh, purchased by these potential customers. And then obviously when the rest of the Christmas rush happens, your designs are going to be up there too as well. So I certainly hope that you found value in today's video. If you did, do me a favor, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel or haven't as yet subscribed to the channel, do me an amazing favor, smash that subscribe button, turn on the bell notification icon so that you'll be informed each and every time that I upload a new video to my channel bent on helping you to reach the most success with your print-on-demand business. But for today, that's all I've got. And as always, be safe, be well, be creative. Bye for now.